Hey guys, uh, we're going to keep going with C++. We're going to start looking at a type of data called a Boolean, uh, which can either be true or false. And uh, we're going to look at how you can kind of change the way that your program operates um, depending on whether certain conditions are true or false. So, let's just get started. Come on, text it. Oh, there we go. Um, okay, let's go ahead and normal stuff. I checked my I checked my channel today and I have two new subscribers, which is really exciting. Uh, one of them I know in real life, and the other I don't. So um, that was uh, really cool to see that. Um, okay, so let's start out with. Uh, the type of data called a boolean and you so you declare it with this bool and then the the name of your variable in this case I'll just call it condition to be clear and then you could either set it equal to something or you could do a semicolon set it equal to something um, later uh, so let's do it that way um, okay so when you are setting conditions or booleans um, use parentheses and then you can put um, comparison operators in here um, which will either return a true or a false so let's try something like uh, 5 is greater than 3 and so the way this is going to work is it's going to check is 5 greater than 3 and if it is then it's going to set condition to true and if it's not then it's going to set condition to false so let's go ahead and check this out Um, a true will be a, uh, a 1, and a false will be a 0. So, with this, we should expect 5 is greater than 3 should be true, so we should be expecting a 1. So let's see. Okay, cool, we got a 1, so 5 is indeed greater than 3. Um, so the comparison operators that I mentioned a second ago, um... For math, you can do this greater than, uh, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. Um, and then there's also a uh, equal, like if this is exactly equal to this. Um, note that this has two equal signs. Um, we use the one equal sign when we're doing assignment, so that's when we're trying to assign uh, whatever's on the right of the equal sign to the variable on the left. So if we had just a 1 equal sign, it would try to assign 3 to 5, and um, it's just going to, it might work, but it, it's not going to um, evaluate the condition the way you're going to expect it to. So uh, be sure to remember those two equal signs, they're really important. So let's try, if 5 is exactly equal to 3, then we'll get a true, um, but if it's not, we should get a false or a 0, and we got a 0 because... 5 does not equal 3, does it? But if we did 5 equals 5, we get a true. Um, so there you go. Also, when you're doing these uh, booleans, you can have little nested um, uh, actions like math. Like if we did something like if 25 divided by 5 equals 5. So 25 divided by 5 should be 5, which should equal 5. So um, we should expect true here. And indeed, uh, we got a 1. 25 divided by 5 does equal 5. Um, so I don't know, if you were making like a quiz or something, and uh, you were having it do multiplication or something, and you were saying, you know, if 9, or sorry, 9 times 5, and uh, then you have the user's input here. So let's actually do that. See out. What do you think is... Uh, 9 times 5. Int answer. Cn answer. Pool condition. Condition equals 9 times 5 equals their answer. So, actually, this makes more sense, I think. Answer equals equals 9 times 5. 
even though if we did 9 times 5 equals answer, it would be the same. I think this makes more sense to have the variable first and then the, the math second. But it's up to you. Um, so let's check this. What do, uh, what do I think is 9 times 5? Um, I know it should be 45, but let's pretend I didn't, I thought it said 4, so let's try 36. Uh, it's going to get a false, a 0. But if we, if we do put in the right answer, 45, we get a 1, because we got it right. So, uh, using these, you could make some kind of little, uh, quiz program or, or math to, um, to check yourself and kind of quiz yourself. So, that's really, that's pretty cool. The only thing that's missing from being able to do that is, uh, we don't really want to tell the user condition false, because that's not really going to make much sense to your average student. Um, so instead, we actually want it to output either you are correct or you are false. So the way that we do that is using an if statement. So the way that you make if statements is you type if, and then in these parentheses, after the if, you put your um, the condition that you want to check. So since we've already created a boolean to hold the condition, let's go ahead and just put it right in there. And then you start a block. Oops. And then in here, you put what you want the program to do if the condition is true. So if their answer does indeed equal what 9 times 5 really is, then we want it to say, you are correct. Now if the condition is going to be false, um, the way that we check for that is we use this else word. Um, and basically this happens, uh, it checks the condition, and if the condition is true, then it executes this block. But if the condition is false, it skips this entire block and goes straight to this else, which you also put in a block. So this else is going to happen when that condition is not true. So you are incorrect. So let's try this out now. Hopefully it should be... Oops. Hopefully it should look a little bit friendlier. What do I think is 9 times 5? Um... Isn't it 67? Oh, I am incorrect. What do I think is 9 times 5? I think it's 45. Oh, I am correct. So, there we go. We've gotten our program to um, both have memory, uh, like I was getting really excited about a while ago, and then now it can actually evaluate that memory and make judgments based on uh, various conditions and then change the actual program depending on uh, whether those conditions are true or false. So this is really cool. Obviously, it's a very integral part of any type of programming um, software or games or anything. Uh, obviously, if the user is going to click the yellow button, it needs to take a different action than if the user clicked the, the green button. So um, if, if statements are everywhere in all type of programming. So um, they're really cool, I think, because they can change the way the program acts uh, depending on conditions. So